Hey Prenshu. Yeah. I'm thinking of posting the serious assignment video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro, you should post it. Everybody sure. should see our misery. But uh, who will see it? Don't all see it. <laughs> Probably the juniors will copy it. <laughs> <laughs> Land, land this assignment is for a subject called computing for data science so it's based on a concept called a active shape model so the uh, basic idea is we uh, take the outline of this hand we uh, take the coordinates of this uh, outline we try to build a mathematical model and uh, using that model we will be able to generate new images or new shapes so that is the crux of this uh, active shape model so let's go through the code so uh, i'm starting with importing all the libraries uh, numpy and math to work with numbers matplotlib to uh, plot my uh, graphs and image to load the images so uh, these two sections are uh, will these two are some functions which we'll be using later so let's start with importing the image so i uh, import this image and store it as an array so this has a shape of 2360 by 1640 so which is uh, this 2360 by 1640 and uh, each pixel has a rgb value so i am going through this array and checking for the rgb values corresponding to black uh, that is the outline of the shape and i am uh, taking the those coordinates so when i plot those coordinates i am getting the shape of this hand so which is good we are able to uh, take the coordinates of black and able to plot it so but this uh, just with this points we wouldn't be able to trace to the points because when the uh, when we try to read the array it went through the rows of the array so these points are in arbitrary order in that uh, array so we we need this pod, uh, coordinates ordered in a way so that we'll be able to trace through these points trace through these points and work on this so for that to order the coordinates i have written a function but for that we need a starting point so what i'm doing is i'm uh, calculating the uh, distance from origin for every point and since i know this point has a maximum distance from origin i am taking this point and inputting that as my starting point for the for my function so this method uh, does just that this loop takes the coordinate which has the maximum distance from origin so this is that index which is 2354 by 885 so with that uh, yeah so this is just a change of x and y so this is that starting point so with that starting point i am inputting my coordinates to the order points function which which takes this point and searches in its neighborhood for other points and if it finds a point it moves there and searches for neighbor further so this point takes all the points and traces through the entire hand and gets all the points in an order so this function does that so we can see that it traced through about uh, 6500 points so now we have traced through these points we have the coordinates ordered so what we will need is so we will need uh, since this is a continuous smooth graph with thousands of points if we are able to approximate this with a straight line we'll end up with just two points of starting and ending so if we can have if we can get straight lines across the whole shape straight line straight line straight line if we are able to approximate the entire curve with a set of straight lines we'll end up with a lot less number of points which will be easier to work with so that is this section we are trying to apply something called piecewise linear approximation so this function get critical points uh, does that it takes this ordered set of points it takes some step length and this uh, distance which is nothing but this function so it goes through the entire entire curve and tries to approximate with straight lines so that is what this function does so after getting critical points uh, through this function we could see that about 6500 points was uh, were reduced to the, just 157 points uh, so i am trying to see if i can approximate with further approximate further so i am again inputting these points to the same function and now we can see that we are we are ending up with just 31 points and if we try to plot those 31 points we can see uh, some skeletal shape of the hand which we can say it's uh, almost a linear approximation of the hand so so far we have taken the shape of hand we tried to get the coordinates and approximate the shape using straight lines and we ended up with just uh, 31 points 
so what we're going to next do next is we either do the same thing for uh, multiple shapes say a uh, 50 hand shape you can get multiple hands do the same thing and repeat the process till this you'll end up with um, uh, if you take say 50 hands you'll end up with 50 skeletal shapes you can either do that or we take this one shape and add noise to all these 31 points so we get 50 shapes from this one shape so uh, the second option is easier so we'll look at that now so what we're going to do is we are taking this shape and we are storing it as the mother vector of shape uh, 62 cross 1 storing it as 62 cross 1 so to get multiple shapes we need to add noise to this vector so i am writing a method to generate noise this uh, this method returns a noise vector of uh, length 62 cross 1 so what i'm doing is with this mother vector i'm uh, looping to find 49 more shapes and i am uh, putting all the vectors in a matrix so each vector is of 62 length and i have 50 vectors so this mat this hand vectors matrix is 62 by 50 so now we have about 50 hand shapes so now we are uh, now we are ready to do something called principal component analysis so what we are going, going to do is we have 50 shapes we try to uh, see how these 50 50 shapes are varying uh, how the 31 points of each shape is varying across these 50 shapes so using that we'll be able to build the model so for that uh, we, we, we see the mean shape of all the 50 shapes we average out all the vectors and see what is the mean shape so we end up with a 60, 62 cross 1 vector which is mean shape next uh, since we need to see how these 62 dimensions are varying with uh, each other we get we try to get the covariance matrix of these 50 vectors we input the 50 vectors in this uh, function so where each column is a vector of 60 dimensions so we end up with a covariance matrix of 62 by 62 that is we take each dimension and we see how is it varying with other 61 dimensions and with itself so uh, we have 61 values for each dimension so it's 62 by 62 next for this covariance matrix we are trying to find the eigenvectors and eigenvalues from the inbuilt linear algorithm mod module, we are finding the eigenvectors and eigenvalues. There are about 62 eigenvectors with uh, 62 dimensions and we get the corresponding eigenvalues. So now what we are going to do is reduce the number of eigenvectors that we are going to use. So out of the 62 eigenvectors, not everything might vary significantly. So what I am doing here is, I am taking the total of all the eigenvalues and I am summing each eigenvalue uh, and seeing till what eigenvalue it, it's about 95% of the total eigenvalue so when I'm doing it that I can see that about 33 of the 62 vectors account for about 95% of the total eigenvalues so what we're going to do, do is just uh, take this significant eigenvectors and eigenvalues of just these 33 uh, 33 eigenvectors so now we have done the principal component analysis we have uh, reduced from 62 to 30, just 30, 33 eigenvectors so using this we will be able to uh, build this active shape model so how we are going to do that is so uh, you have this mean shape which we found is just 62 by 1 vector you have this mean shape and to this you add some kind of variance to so that you will be able to generate new shape so this is just some scaling factor of this some variation to uh, which you are going to add to this mean shape so we know this is 62 by 1 and this variance factor uh, this variation factor is going to be your eigenvectors and this scaling factor is some uh, scaled version of this eigenvalues so this is 62 by 33 and this is 33 by 1 so if we multiply this we know we'll get uh, something 62 by 1 so we'll be able to add these two so we are doing exactly that we take this mean shape we are doing matrix multiplication of this significant eigenvectors which is our variation factor and we are multiplying with some scaling factor that is uh, some scaled version of this eigenvalues so i am repeating uh, this to find about uh, say six shapes so if i try to plot these six shapes you can see we are able to generate some 
uh, something similar to hand so each corresponds to a different uh, scaling value each each adds a different variation to the mean shape and we are able to generate new shape we uh, we we uh, we approximated with just 31 points of our hand if we had uh, let's say about 80 or more we'll be able to uh, generate more accurate uh, real life uh, shape of hands so yeah that is this assignment to I hope you like this. Yeah, I'll talk about it.